Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here with episode 6 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. So, last episode, we went over the grinder, making lubricant, and uh, the hydrokinetic engine. This episode, we're going over gearboxes. Um, before we do, I want to make a quick note. Um, one of my viewers, uh, Anthony Izumi, had a problem with his pump. Uh, the pump wasn't working, and what we came up with figuring out was that he had an old version of Rotary Craft. Um, just so that everyone knows, and I'm going to start putting it in the descriptions, um, FTB Monster is running version 19B of Rotary Craft. Uh, so if you have a different version than 19B, some of the numbers that I've got in this uh, in my series might not be uh, correct, but the general um, principles of everything else, it, you know, those aren't going to change. Um, so if something doesn't work the way that it works for me, um, check your handbook, see how it works for you, and just uh, adjust accordingly. Because uh, everything will still work the same way, there just be might be different numbers. Like his pump needed 32 uh, newton meters of torque, and, and this only needs 4. So just make sure you've got uh, 19B, um, and if you don't have 19B, just you know remember that yours might not work exactly like mine. Exactly. I'm, I'm just talking about little numbers. So anyway, let's get into gearboxes, because there's a lot to talk about with gearboxes. It's going to be a longer episode, because you need to be really comfortable with gearboxes. Um, like, the power system in general is, I think, what uh, turns most people off to Rotorcraft, because they think it's too complicated. But it really isn't. It's just a, a lot of simple math. So anyway, let's talk about gearboxes. So, the basic gearbox can be made out of wood, or stone, or steel diamond, or bedrock. Um, if you're going to make a wood gearbox, and I don't know why you would, because I've never seen any reason to do it, but if you want to make a a, um, a wooden gearbox, you use uh, wood planks and these gear units, which we're going to learn how to make in a minute. If you want to make a stone gearbox, and I have had times where I've wanted to use these, it's stone slabs and stone gear units. We're going to make some steel gearboxes, because I'm going to use primarily the hydro uh, kinetic engine to demonstrate it, and we need steel as a minimum uh, to deal with its power output. So gearboxes um, of steel or higher are crafted using mounts. So we learned how to make those last episode. And like I said then, you, you mounts are made are used for a lot of things. Um, and then we need gear units. And uh, whatever kind of gear unit, because there, there are a couple of different kinds of gear units, uh, whatever gear unit you put here, that's the gearbox you get. So right now I've got a 2x gear unit in here, and I have a 2 to 1 gearbox. If I put a 16, uh, X gear unit in here, I get a 16 to 1 uh, gearbox. So let's see how to make these gear units. Um, we're going to start with the 2X, and it's very simple. Two uh, steel gears and two shaft units. And the uh, 2X uh, gear unit is used to make all the other gear units. Um, so the 4X gear unit, quite simply, two 2X gear units with these two shafts. Gives you a 4X gear unit. 8x gear unit, as you might expect, is a 4x gear unit and a 2x gear unit. Now, for this one, the 2x gear unit does need to be above the 4x gear unit. Um, so if, if you have this in here and it's not working, flip these around, make sure the 2 is on top, uh, and you should be able to, to get it out. I keep misclicking and getting another crafting station. Um, the 16x gear unit, you have to make it with an 8x gear unit and a 2x gear unit. I tried, and you cannot use two 4x gear units. So it must be an 8 and a 2. Um, so that gives you the 16x gear unit. So as you can see, these bigger and bigger gearboxes, they get more and more expensive. Um, they take a lot of steel if you're going to use a steel uh, gearbox. Obviously, if you're making stone gearboxes, it's a lot cheaper because stone is infinite. Um, but you will have to use smooth stone to make the gears. So, uh, yeah. And just so you know, um, if you wanted to make them out of diamond, and I'm going to show you a use for these uh, diamond gearboxes. Um, diamond gears are crafted with five diamonds, and you get eight gears, which isn't that bad, really. But, oops, I broke it. Clicked the wrong button. Anyway, let me uh, fix that. I'm not a professional, guys. <laughs> As uh, three diamonds like this, it gets you three diamond shaft units. So diamond shaft units are not very good. I mean, not cheap. They're expensive, so, you know... Obviously, you don't want to use diamonds whenever you can af afford to not use diamonds. But anyway, 
let's take a look at how gear units work. So we've got our steam engine here producing 16 kilowatts of uh, power at 32 newton meters of torque and 512 radians per second. Um, I have here a 2 to 1 steel gearbox. Now, an important part about gearboxes is that they require uh, lubricant, uh, which is why we made the grinder before we started talking about them. If I place this against the power, you'll notice that it's taking damage. It's at 1% damage, now it's at 2% damage. And as it takes damage, the power output goes down. Um, the torque keeps dropping, because as it takes damage, it becomes less and less able to um, transmit power effectively. And you can see it's actually taking damage more quickly now. Um, I don't know if that's a real thing, but it's taking damage constantly, and eventually it'll break. And currently, there is no way to fix them. So you've got to be really careful with your gearboxes. So what I like to do is place them like this so that they're perpendicular to where the power is so I don't have to worry about connecting it to the power. And then I can, you can go in and you can take a bucket of lubricant and you can just put it in here to put a bucket in. But a better way to do it is to use lubricant hose like we talked about last time. And then I'll use a liquid reservoir or you can use any sort of tank. Uh, lubricant will go into other mods tanks no problem. And now we have lubricant. The steel gearboxes hold the most lubricant at 24. Um, the diamond only holds uh, 1,000. And this is 24 buckets, by the way. Um, this, the uh, diamond only holds one bucket's worth. The wood holds three. I forget this one. I think it's like six or something, maybe. Um, but anyway, if I now attach this to the power, we see that these uh, dynos don't have the same readouts. So if I go into the... Uh, GUI again, we can see that we are currently in torque mode. Uh, the gearbox will show you how much power it's getting and its ratio, although its ratio is in the name as well. And so what this is doing, uh, if we can see that the power is the same. We got 16 kilowatts here, we got 16 kilowatts here. But what the 2 to 1 gearbox is doing in torque mode is that it's doubling the torque. You can see 32 there, 64 here, and it's having the speed. So it's, it's multiplying the torque by 2, dividing the speed by 2. To change that, we can take a screwdriver, hold shift, and right click on it, and that swaps it into speed mode. So if we go in, we see that now it's in speed mode. So it does the exact opposite of what it was doing before. It is halving the torque and doubling the speed. And that's what the 2 to 1 uh, gearbox does. So all of these gearboxes work the same way. Uh, whatever number it is, so whether it's 2, 4, 8, or 16, it will in torque mode, multiply the torque by that number and divide the speed by that number. And it will also do the opposite in speed mode. It will multiply the speed by that number and divide the torque by that number. Just like in real life, that's how gearboxes work. So that's the uh, basics of gearboxes. That's how they function. And the purpose for these is so that you can uh, take your power and you can feed it into machines that require specific amounts of torque and specific amounts of speed. So we're going to come over here. I built out this big platform so I could place a bunch of stuff. I got some dinos set up. And we got our grinder over here. And um, we're gonna th I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to power the grinder using the hydrokinetic engine. Now, obviously, for this demonstration, we're using the full 64 block tall waterfall. Obviously, if your waterfall isn't at that tall, if you've opted to start with a shorter waterfall, maybe uh, 21 or something like that, maybe 15 even, um, and start small and work your way up, then you'll have your own numbers to do your own calculations with. And you might not even need to do some a lot of the stuff that we're doing here. But this is an example of how you have to use gearboxes in order to manage really high power outputs. So if I take a stone shaft, which is what we've been using, and I place it here, bam, the shaft breaks. Because this is producing half a megawatt of, en of power at a ridiculously high torque much higher than the stone can handle. It's also higher than the steel can handle. Steel breaks as well. This is what happens when you break it. Um, I'm not actually sure if you pick this back up if you get uh, the mount. I actually don't know how that works. I think you might just have to break that down into scraps. Um, but don't quote me. The only two shafts that we can use to directly connect to this engine because it's producing so much power would be diamond and bedrock. But obviously you want to use diamond as sparingly as possible for shafts uh, because you have other um, 
more important things to use it on, and we don't have access to Bedrock yet. Uh, and Bedrock is really expensive, so uh, you're only going to want to use it on the things that you absolutely have to have. Um, so, since we can't connect these steel gearboxes to this because they would just explode, I'll show you what happens. Um, you saw what happened when a shaft breaks, but this is what happens when a gearbox breaks. It blows up. Uh, you do get a, a couple bits back. You get some sawdust if it's wood. Um, I think you get some gravel if it's stone. Uh, and steel gives you... Um, here, let me just do the same thing. Steel gives you the... Um, where'd it go? Right, it gives you, these, it gives you a, a couple of uh, steel scraps, which you have to melt back down uh, to get uh, some steel back. So anyway, the the only way we can use this much power is to split it with a junction. Um, junctions and bevel gears, they they don't care. They they can take any power amount and they don't break, even though they're made out of steel. So I set this in splitting mode and I'm going to turn it so that it's uh, oriented correctly. Now, like we talked about with junctions earlier, you can set various ratios. So if you have a 64 block tall waterfall. If your hydrokinetic engine is producing half a megawatt of power, you can set your shaft junction to this right here, 1 to 31 bend. Because I can't set it to inline, it doesn't work. Um, that, that's probably that's just a limitation of this thing. That much power, it won't let me output on the inline. I have to output it on the bend. But that's fine, because uh, that, that's the direction this is going. But anyway, 1 to 31 bend, it sends uh, 31 this way and and one this way so it's a it's a 31 to 1 ratio so you'll notice that we're getting only 16 kilowatts 512 newton meters of torque at 32 rads out of this end and that is actually the same amount of power and the same speed well no the same amount of power as the steam engine what's different is that it's producing 512 newton meters of torque instead of 512 uh, radians per second which means that we can attach our grinder to it I have to attach it this way. Attach our grinder to it, and it's going to take about 30 seconds per operation. So this is the absolute simplest way possible that you can use this super powerful hydrokinetic engine to power your uh, your grinder. Now, obviously, like I said earlier, if your waterfall isn't this tall, you won't have this amount of power. But anyway, so it's not very difficult to power your uh, grinder. If that's all you want to do, you can just stick some power junction uh, junctions on it and split it until uh, in various ratios until you get down to, you know, whatever whatever it is that you want. You know, you could run it at a higher if you wanted to. I could change the ratio and it would still work. I could run it one to one, but it won't speed it up. Um, just remember that the the grinder does not speed up with extra torque. It's only extra speed. So you can do this, and then you have 507 kilowatts at 15,872 newton meters at 32 ratings per second for all everything else. Um, but what if you want to power your grinder at, at a higher speed, at a, at a pretty reasonable speed? Um, I'm going to show you how to get this up down to about 12 seconds. So we're going to split it in half, the power, and we're going to run 262 kilowatts at 8 kilonewton meters of torque uh, to the grinder. But if I try and put like a big 16 gearbox here, just um, watch what happens. It explodes. Because you can't put steel through that much torque. It goes for shafts and it goes for gearboxes. So if we wanted to use this much power for our grinder, which we do, we only have one option at, at this point, uh, and that's to use a diamond gearbox. Now you have two options with diamond gearboxes. And let me go ahead and grab another gearbox, a two to one. You have two options in this scenario. I, I could use a four to one gearbox right here, and then a 16x gearbox of steel right here, and it would work. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But if I don't want to use that much diamond, you can also I could also use a 2 to 1 gearbox, but then I would need another 2 to 1 steel gearbox. So you have to decide what's more valuable to you. If you want to use some more diamonds on this one, or if you want to use some more steel on another gearbox and some more lubricant. Uh, in this example, I'm going to use the 4 to 1. I'm going to place it here. 
and I'm going to rotate it. Now, by default, gearboxes are always in torque mode, and so we don't want that. So let's put it into speed mode. And so now you can see what's happening. It's dividing the torque by four and multiplying the speed by four. And now, what I want to do, because I, I, I want this uh, grinder to get only 128 newton meters of torque, because it doesn't benefit from any more torque. So I want to get the most speed possible. That's where this 16x, well, 16 to 1, I should stop saying x, 16 to 1 gearbox goes. But it exploded again. And why was that? It exploded because it's in torque mode. Okay? And if we torqued this up, if, if, if we geared this up by 16, we'd be running 32,000 newton meters into this gearbox. And it's steel, it can't take it. So make very careful. Be very sure that if you're going to use your gearbox at torques that could exceed the load limit of the material, that you make sure it's in the right mode before you switch it over. Because the worst thing in the world is blowing one of these things up. That's a lot of steel. Okay. So now, the 16X gearbox is taking 2048 newton meters, sorry I'm a bit gassy, 2048 newton meters and dividing it by 16 down to 128 newton meters which is just what I wanted for the grinder and it's taking the speed of 128 radians per second and multiplying it up to 2 kilorads. So in this case it's basically swapping these around uh, the torque and the speed. And so now we're running our grinder at uh, 12 seconds per operation and you can see it's grinding this canola much faster than it was before, which is going to give you quite a nice surplus of lubricant um, if this is all you're running. If this is all you're running that you're using lubricant for, uh, you're going to get a lot of it, and it's going to be nice. So you could build a tank, you could build a bunch of reservoirs, you could build a, a deep tank from Tinker's Construct, I think. I haven't tried it, but I think it would work. You could use the uh, uh, railcraft steel or iron tanks and store yourself up some lubricant uh, if you want. Um, but like I said, uh, you could use a 4 to 1 here, or you could use a 2 to 1, but you need another 2 to 1. So this is a 4 to 1 gearbox, and this is a 16 uh, to 1 gearbox. So I'm pretty sure that what you do then is, you is if we multiply these together, I think that gives us the ratio that we're using here. It's either multiplying or adding. I think it's multiplying. All this stuff is multiplying, is multiplicative. So uh, 16 times 4, what would that be? I don't care. But that's that's the ratio that we're doing, isn't it? Yeah, 64. Yeah, that would be correct, yeah. We're running a 64 to 1 ratio from here to here with these gearboxes. So that's one way to figure it out. If you want to figure out you know I exactly what you need like remember with our steam engine powering our grinder we needed to get up to 128 newton meters of torque so the calculation for that would be 128 divided by 32 and whatever that number is that's your ratio so it's just it's some simple math you can do with a calculator um, to figure out the ratios that you're gonna need okay so that's one way to do it but what if you don't have any diamonds at all but you have a, a whole bunch of steel and you don't mind using more of it. Well, what we can do then is we can use another method. And this method illustrates that rotary craft has many ways of getting around the power uh, your power situation. So what I'm doing here is taking this is the same amount of power that we started with over here and I'm going to split it again. And now that I've split it again, we've got 4 kilonewton meters of torque which is low enough to run steel. It's low enough that we can use steel uh, gearboxes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just that. I'm going to use some steel gearboxes. Um, so if I put a gearbox here, and why don't I put this gearbox uh, right here, and I'm going to use a bevel gear over here. That's a shaft junction. Where are my bevel gears? Ah. Let's grab one. Thought I had one. Grab some bevel gears. That's the yellow side. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's give you some lubricant. 
with my uh, lubricant hose. Just pop it in the middle. And I'll pop a reservoir on top. Fill it up with lubricant. And pop these into speed mode so they don't explode. Turn it like so. Now, if I grab a dynamometer and I add on some dynamometers, what we can see is that we have now the same amount of power, 131 kilowatts, which is half what we have here. And each of them have been turned down, have been upscaled in speed. They've been geared up to have only 256 newton meters of torque, but 512 radians per second. All right? Now what we want to do is we want to merge the power back together. So if I take some bevel gears, oop. How did I do this before? I have to do this properly. Um, okay. I will put the shaft junction here. Where'd it go? Okay. Shaft junction. In merge mode. Rotate it around. Pop a bevel gear here. Output it to which side was that? Going to the purple side. And input on side is that over there? That's the black side. Okay. And then I will use just a stone shaft to merge it together. Put a dyno here. And now we're back up to 262 kilowatts at 512 newton meters and 512 radians per second. So if we want to get this down to uh, 128 newton meters, we need a 4 to 1 gearbox. So I'll grab my steel 4 to 1 gearbox, use my lubricant hose to give it some lubricant, pop it into speed mode, turn it, and now if I put a dyno on here, you can see we have success. 262 kilowatts at 128 newton meters of torque and 2 kilorads. So we've accomplished the same thing that we accomplished over here using some diamonds over here using no diamonds but we've used a lot more steel we have two 16x gearboxes well 16 to 1 we have uh, two shaft junctions two bevel gears and a 4 to 1 gearbox so we're using quite a bit more lubricant we used a lot more steel making those 16 to 1 gearboxes but what you can see illustrated here is that you don't need diamonds if in this situation you know you can it's mechanical uh, there it's lossless it's you get you gotta think you just have to think about how you can engineer it shaft junctions don't break so if you have too much torque uh, you can split it with the shaft junctions now this would not work if we're using high speeds let me be very clear about that because as you can see the speed doesn't change when you use the splitter so this illustration right here only works if you have if it's torque that you have to deal with not speed okay so y you can't change the speed with uh, with these you can only change speeds with gearboxes all right so in this situation you could get away without using a diamond gearbox but if it was reversed and your speed was what was too high you couldn't you would need to use the gearbox the higher material okay just remember that you can change you can split torque in half with uh, junctions you can't split speed anyway um, I hope this has been helpful there's a lot I feel like gearboxes um, they're kind of complex but at the same time they're kind they're simple um, you just have to be able to think in terms of the ratios so grab your calculator uh, do some division do some multiplication figure out what ratio you need and then figure out what combination of gearboxes will get you there in this case here I needed a 64 to 1 gear ratio to get from 8192 newton meters down to 128 how would you figure this out take 8192 newton meter uh, 8 yeah 8192 newton meters or maybe that's a I don't think that's actually true that's just 8.192 but take that number, divide it by 128, that should give you your ratio. So 
once you know your ratio that you need, you just have to make the right number, uh, the right ratios of gearboxes. Just remember that it's all multiplication, it's not addition. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I know it's probably dragged on for a while, but it's really important that you get to understand gearboxes because the powertrains that you have to build, they can get very complicated if you're using a lot of input power. But you can always distill it down to some very simple mechanics. It's just multiplication and division. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, as you can see, a hydrokinetic engine running at full power. It does take a lot of infrastructure uh, to be able to use it. Um, so it's very complex, complicated with the hydrokinetic engine, a lot of setup. Uh, next episode, I'm going, we're going to take our gearboxes and I'm going to show you how to make the uh, gas engine, which is a much simpler engine to use than the hydrokinetic engine. Um, and we're going to, show you, I'm going to show you how you can use uh, a gearbox to power a processor using the uh, gas engine. Obviously, if you have this set up, you can just use this. But if you don't, uh, the, the gas engine will power the processor by itself uh, with, a gear, with the help of the gearbox. And next episode, you'll learn how to do that. So I really hope you've uh, enjoyed the episode. I hope that you've learned from it. I hope I haven't confused you. If you have questions, please, please, please ask in the comments. I read every comment. I respond to your co questions. If you didn't quite understand something in this tutorial, um, let me know in the comments and I will try and help you to understand it because I really want you to be able to confidently go into Rotary Craft and start using it because it's a really awesome mod and, uh, and, and you're, I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with it. So uh, I'm Sentinel H. I'll see you in the next video and I'm signing out.